Tony Ferguson, a prominent figure in the world of mixed martial arts or MMA, stands out not only for his prowess inside the octagon, but also for his distinctive persona that has propelled him into meme-worthy fame. Widely regarded as one of the most popular fighters in the sport, Ferguson's unfiltered bluntness and off-the-wall comments have cultivated one of the most significant fan bases in MMA history. However, as we delve into his story, it prompts the question, does Tony Ferguson's popularity truly reflect his merit? Or is it a result of his unique and often controversial approach to the fight game? Before we start talking about that, we want to give you a warm welcome to our channel. We're glad you're here and we hope you enjoy what we must share. Tony Ferguson's Controversial Clash with Classmate Charlie Radar In an episode of The Ultimate Fighter Season 13, Tony Ferguson found himself embroiled in controversy during a heated altercation with fellow classmate Charlie Radar. This incident unfolded on Wednesday night, fueled by a combination of alcohol and testosterone, ultimately leading to Ferguson crossing a line by bringing up Radar's ongoing custody battle for his son. The confrontation began innocently enough, with Radar pouring water on Ferguson's head. However, as tensions escalated, Ferguson took the argument to a deeper personal level. In a drunken state, he taunted Radder about his custody problems, callously saying, Hit me, don't hit your son. Reflecting on the incident in a post on the SB Nation MMA blog, Ferguson expressed uncertainty about why he targeted Radder's son, but speculated on the potential influences. He shared his own experience of growing up without his birth father, and suggested that the combination of Radder's situation, the adrenaline from fighting, and alcohol exacerbated his own unresolved issues. Ferguson admitted regret over his words, acknowledging that he was in a peculiar mental state during his time on the show. The pressure, frustration, and lack of personal outlets had taken a toll on him. Despite his regrets, Ferguson mentioned that he and Radder, along with other classmates like Clay Harbison and Chuck, have since discussed the incident and they are in a better place now than they were that tumultuous night. The fighter attributed part of the bizarre behavior to the unique conditions of the Ultimate Fighter experience. Cast members lived together for six weeks without access to television, books, visitors, or privacy. The combination of training, drinking, and constant interaction creates an abnormal environment that can lead to unexpected and regrettable actions, such as the incident involving Tony Ferguson and Charlie Radder's personal struggles with custody battles for his son. Tony Ferguson's I Will Ankle Pick You moment In one memorable I Will Ankle Pick You moment, Tony Ferguson found himself in a less than heroic role. Picture this, Fabricio Wordham conducting his own interview on the side and Tony, well, being the jerk in the room. Instead of waiting for his turn or showing some courtesy, Tony interjected with a blunt, shut up, I'm talking. Now keep in mind that Wordham is not just anyone. He's a sizable presence and it was evident that even Tony with all his bravado had a healthy respect for Wordham's stature. Despite his attempt to escalate the situation, you could almost sense a hint of apprehension from Tony. It was a classic case of biting off more than one can chew, especially when dealing with a much larger opponent. This incident adds a humorous twist to the narrative, showcasing Tony's boldness but also highlighting the fine line between confidence and bravado. In the end, it serves as a reminder that even the toughest fighters can find themselves in situations where they might want to reconsider picking a verbal fight, especially when facing off against a heavyweight like Fabricio Wordham. Tony Ferguson's Explosive Press Conference Tony Ferguson in a press conference leading up to his anticipated fight exuded confidence in having undergone one of his best training camps. His enthusiasm for facing Tony, his opponent, was palpable, emphasizing the need for recognition that he's the one to watch, urging his adversary to shift focus away from Khabib. However, the mood shifted dramatically as Tony called out his opponent for aiding Justin Gaethje in a title fight, accusing him of being manipulated by manager Ali Abdel Aziz. In a surprising turn, the press conference delved into rumors surrounding Tony's training methods, specifically speculation about him consistently causing injuries to training partners. Unapologetically, he confronted his opponent about his unorthodox fighting style. As tensions escalated, Tony hinted at bringing physicality into the fight, referencing an incident with a student where he broke the student's rib. The opponent, visibly surprised, questioned Tony's decision to harm his own student to which Tony responded defiantly claiming the opponent made him do it. Amidst laughter, the atmosphere remained charged with anticipation for the upcoming clash. The press conference continued with a shift to Benil Darius's comments during Tony's previous press conference, where Benil labeled Tony's actions as a dick move. Tony with a smile acknowledged the sentiment, expressing that sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. 
The press conference concluded with lingering excitement about the impending fight, leaving fans eager to witness the intensity unfolding inside the octagon. Concerns rise as Tony Ferguson faces domestic violence allegations. In a concerning turn of events, the wife of former UFC interim lightweight champion, Tony Ferguson has taken legal action by filing a restraining order against him, citing allegations of domestic violence. The court proceedings unfolded in Orange County, Calif, Superior Court, with an ex parte hearing occurring on the same day. An investigation by court's Domestic Violence Prevention Services Project is scheduled for March 22nd, followed by a domestic violence hearing on April 5th. Specific details about the allegations made by Christina Ferguson are not immediately available. However, the court defines a domestic violence restraining order as a protective measure against abuse or threats of abuse from someone with a close relationship. MMA Junkie managed to obtain five police incident reports outlining various domestic disturbances at the Ferguson residence since January 2018, including three within the past month. It's noteworthy that Tony Ferguson has not been arrested or charged in connection with any of these incidents. Efforts to reach Christina Ferguson or her attorney for comment were unsuccessful. Meanwhile, Tony Ferguson's management, Paradigm Sports, issued a statement to MMA Junkie, emphasizing that the situation is a private family matter currently in the process of being resolved. This development sheds light on the challenging mental struggles Tony Ferguson might be facing and how they potentially impact those close to him. The multiple instances of police involvement indicate a level of concern within his personal life, raising questions about the toll his mental health may be taking on his relationships. The situation underscores the broader conversation about the need for support and understanding for individuals dealing with mental health issues in and out of the public eye. As we navigate through the interesting periods of Tony Ferguson's journey, from his definite impact on the MMA scene to the controversies and complexities that have unfolded, it prompts reflection on the multifaceted nature of his persona. Beyond the octagon battles and press conference theatrics, Ferguson's story takes unprecedented turns, revealing the challenges that come with fame, both within and outside the cage. The recent domestic violence allegations have cast a shadow over the fighter's personal life, raising concerns about the toll mental health struggles may be taking on his relationships. The juxtaposition of his larger-than-life presence in the MMA world with the private battles he faces emphasizes the need for empathy and understanding. It serves as a reminder that even the toughest fighters contend with internal struggles, shedding light on the broader conversation surrounding mental health within the scope of professional sports. As we await the resolution of the legal proceedings and hope for a positive outcome for all involved parties, the Tony Ferguson narrative continues to evolve, transcending the boundaries of the octagon. This unfolding saga underscores the importance of compassion, support, and open dialogue surrounding mental health challenges, not just for fighters like Tony, but for individuals across diverse walks of life. Did you enjoy Tony Ferguson's gripping tale? Subscribe and hit the bell for updates and join our exploration into history's darker corners. Your support means the world. Thanks and stay tuned for more.